Good morning. morning. It's good to see everybody. Welcome you to Butler Christian Church. For those that are here in person, we welcome you. For those that are watching us through video today, um, the video may be a little bit crisper than it uh, than it is in weeks past. We had more video cameras, and, and we've made a commitment to uh, to taping and to video worship. So we hope that you enjoy it. I do have a few announcements. Uh, this is the last week for golf. To, uh, Monday night is our last night, so um, we will enjoy that and and then move into the fall. Um, CWF has a meeting right after church today uh, in the fellowship hall. So uh, for those ladies that uh, that are there for that, uh, you'll meet right after church in the fellowship hall. Um, the board visited the face, uh, the uh, mask issue at uh, last month's board meeting. We're going to continue to keep the face masks right now as they are, but one thing that we're going to do is probably cool uh, the fellow or the sanctuary a little bit um, because wearing the mask, you create more heat. So if you are sensitive to that, um, you may want to bring a sweater. Uh, even in the winter, if, if this, and I, I, I don't see any reason why it won't change, uh, I think we're going to be wearing masks for a while. So just be sensitive to that, that, um, that the, the, the worship service or then the sanctuary may be a little bit cooler than normal, and that's, that's why we will be doing that, so uh, to make it more comfortable for those that are wearing masks. Uh, is there any other announcements as far as announcements go? Let us pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning in prayer, (coughs) we thank you for this time of stillness that we can lift our petitions up to you for those unspoken requests. Dear Lord, we know that you hear every prayer that is uttered and every request that is sent. And what a peaceful feeling it is for us knowing that that you hear us and that you look out for us, that you answer our prayers, maybe not the way we would like them to be answered, but what is best for us and what is best for all those that we are praying for. And we thank you for that. As we lift up those that are new to our prayer list, for those that have lost loved ones this past week, we we pray that you give them peace that can only come from you. We also pray that they feel your presence as they grieve, that they know that they're not alone, that you are with them every step of the way. For those that are going in for tests this week, dear Lord, we just pray for for those. uh, For those that are very anxious about their tests, dear Lord, we just pray for peace for them and and a good outcome from their tests.
For those that need physical healing, dear Lord, we pray for them as well today. Be with those that are traveling, that are not here today. Watch over them and give them traveling mercies. Keep them safe and, and bring them back to us next week. And all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Again, we thank you for your offering. Uh, we had uh, our board meeting last uh, last week. The financial report looked very good. Um, you know, we have one bill that is a large bill that is the, the insurance on our property that comes due quarterly. And that came through this month and we were, we were still above what we had spent. So uh, um, you all are giving and, and, and we appreciate that. So let us give thanks for the offering that, that has been given. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the cheerful giver and, and for those that are, that are giving. And we thank you for the offering, for not only taking care of all the utilities and everything else that, that come up weekly and monthly, uh, but also for the other things that the offering does for those wherever it may go and whoever it may touch. Dear Lord, we just pray that it is a blessing upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As today's scripture talks about the, um, it's the parable of the vineyard, and, and no, we're not going to be drinking real wine today, but um, it talks about the master of the vineyard going to the marketplace and seeking workers, seeking laborers to labor at the vineyard. And, and he went at different times during the day, and he found people that were just idly standing by, and he asked them to work, and they came, and then they re received their ward reward. Today, as we, as we take our communion, I want you to think about yourself as laboring for the Lord. And, and when you labor and when you work, you need to be fed. So as we come to the table this morning, uh, we pray that you are being fed. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day, the blessing of the gift of life that you've given to each other, and that we can come together freely as a church to worship, to praise you, and to share in this communion that we're about to partake of. Lord, just now we ask for your blessings on the bread, knowing that it represents the broken body of your Son, Jesus, that was broken for each and every one of us. Lord, we pray that with this nourishment, we would each be strengthened so that we may draw closer to you and follow your will in each and every area of our lives. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On that night when he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. My precious Heavenly Father, we again thank you for this Lord's Day morning that we can come together and worship for you. But especially, Father, we're thankful for the opportunity we have to come around this large table. We can take of this cup that symbolizes in Christ's real blood. He gave us his life on the cross of Calvary, so we may have life and have it everlasting. And as we take in this cup, Father, we ask that you will guide, guard, and direct us in all we do. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. And in a like manner, Jesus also took the cup and cup, saying, This is the spilled blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. And as often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me, and drink ye all of it. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers, 
for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. And when he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out again at about noon and at about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those that were hired at five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us, and we have borne the burden of the day and the, and the scorching heat. But he replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go, and I choose to give to the last the same that I give to you. And am I not allowed to choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. May God richly bless the reading and understanding of the Holy Word. This week's lectionary has us um, back into Matthew. And it's a very familiar story. It's a familiar story about the parable of the vineyard and the laborers and how each labored and, and what they got paid for. And I really want to break today's um, message down into three points. Um, two points are within the text of today's uh, scripture, and, and the one is one that, that I seem to think a lot about, and, and I don't want to, we want to talk a little bit about it this morning. So let's take a look at that, um, that first point. The lifelong laborer. And this is me, and, and, and it's many of you that is sitting uh, here today. You've been a lifelong laborer. You've, been, you've known Christ your whole life. You've labored for Him since you were old enough to maybe light the candles. You know, that's really the first job um, in church is, is to light the candles, to bring the light of Christ into worship. A very important job, and I've talked about it in the past. And then as you grow in age and, and you, the jobs change and, and you may be called to be a deacon, you may be called to be an elder, um, you may be called to be a board member, you may even be called to be a minister at some point. But we are all lifelong laborers. And you know, when I was young, I, I, would, I would wonder what it would have been like to have been raised in a family where we didn't go to church when we were young. Because if, if you ever met an adult that found Christ later in life, it seemed like they were more full of the Spirit. And it was, it was almost like I wanted to see what that was like. But then as I grew a little bit older, I realized how lucky that I was to have been in church and to never have not known Christ in my life. What a comfort that is uh, to someone that has labored for Christ all their life is, is to have that comfort of knowing him and knowing that he has always been with you from the beginning to the end and for an eternity. So with that, being a lifelong laborer, do we think that it comes with extra privileges? 
you know, the, the gold card or, or, you know, you get 2% back or, or whatever you want to call it. You know, we're the lifelong laborers. Do we get something extra, you know, is, um, is our bed in heaven going to be plush? I don't know. You know, what would the extra be? And I got to thinking about that. And I thought about three little words, or it's actually four, or three. Life's not fair. What happens when life's not fair? Have you ever thought about your in your head, or even said the words, life's not fair. I'm a Christian. You know, I, I labor for the Lord. Why, you know, why is this happening to me? Why is life not fair? Tommy's parents let him stay up to 11 o'clock. You make me go to bed at 9 o'clock, and I'm older than Tommy. Life's not fair. All my friends got brand new bicycles for Christmas, and I'm still riding around on this hand-me-down old beater. Life's not fair. And when you turn 16 and everybody else's parents buy them brand new cars and you have to scrape together and buy your own, life's not fair. I remember as, as the first car I bought, I couldn't even buy a Nova. I didn't have enough money, so I bought a Pontiac version of a Nova. It's called a Ventura. Um, I got a Nova after I wrecked the Ventura, but, but uh, it was all the money I had, and it was Kentucky blue, and it was good enough. You know, it, it got me from point A to point B. It had those white plaid seats in, inside. All oh, it was plush, you know. Life's not fair. Um, life's just not fair. Kids go to, my friends go to college, and, and mom and dad pays for their entire college and I've got student loans for 10 years life's just not fair I'm more talented and more deserving why did I not get the promotion why did someone else get it life's just not fair all my friends are getting married starting families of their own and I'm still single life's just not fair Why can't we afford to take a trip to Europe for a month? Take a week, take a month off and go to Europe. That's what Sheila wants to do. <laughs> Life's just not fair. It's just not fair. Look at our house and look at everybody else's houses. They have so much and we have so little. Life is just not fair. Have we ever said, and I'm making fun of this, but have we ever said life's not fair? I think we've all come across that. <clears throat> and does it make us work harder to change our situation? Or do we just set back on our laurels? It is so funny, or I don't know if it's funny, but it's, uh, it's God's timing that, that things that we talk about in Sunday school transcends into church. And Don was talking about when you're young, if you want something, you'll get two or three jobs to pay for whatever you want. <clears throat> but when you're at the end of your life and you get your pension and you have to, to budget that pension for that month, you look at life a little bit differently through another set of eyes. And, and that's what our, our Sunday school's been about, is about wisdom and aging and, and, and what we do at that. I want to look at point two. Now, this point is the point that that's not in today's text. But it's one that I, I seem to, to think a lot about. It's those laborers, that are early in life and they quit laboring. 
The person that was raised in church that gets baptized as a youth. But when they become an adult, they go away from church. They find other places to get their support from. They no longer need church. What about those people? We know about the people that, that labored that come to labor late, but labored through the end of the day. But what about the ones that labor early, but then stop laboring for the Lord? It's not for me to judge. Um, you know, or, or are they going to get in heaven on a technicality because they were saved as a youth? I'm not going to touch that. I had no idea. It's, I'm glad it's not my decision. Um, but it bothers me because I have family members that are in this situation, and I'm sure as well as, as many others of you that had the same situations, that, that kids that were raised in church now long, no longer go to church. What's going to become of them? Will they be laborers? Maybe will they come back and labor again towards the end of their life? Or will they just not labor at all? One to think about, and if you, if you come up with the answer, uh, let me know. Um, it would give me a little bit of peace of mind upon that. Our third point, let's look at those labors that came late in life. Those that found Christ later in life. Randy shared that he, he found Christ as a late teen. Wasn't saved until he was 20. I never knew that. I appreciate Brandy sharing that. Um, we may have a conversation about what it was like to find Christ as an adult, somebody that wasn't in your life the whole time. It almost, and, and Randy may be able to tell more about this, but it's almost like the Spirit is, is, is more abundant in them because they're trying to make up for lost time. They're trying to make up for those years that that they weren't with Christ, so they're, they're putting in the overtime or they're doing the extra. Um, so that they're ready when their time is called. According to, to, to today's parable, they're going to receive the same reward as the lifelong follower. And I'm glad they are. I'm glad they are. <clears throat> now I think today, if, if, if there's an underlying parable within this parable, uh, it's one that maybe we don't talk too much about. But it's that owner of the vineyard that keeps going back to the marketplace and looking for laborers. I think sometimes that gets overshadowed uh, with about the first and the last. And the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So we're going to look at verses 6 and 7 and see what it, it has to say about it. About 5 o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you not standing? Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one else has hired us. So he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. He went to the marketplace five times in one day looking for laborers. How good are we at asking others to come and worship with us? Are we looking every day for those to share our story about Christ with? Or do we get caught so much up in our own life that we just we forget about 
laboring for the Lord. This person went out five times in one day. I think Christ gives us the opportunities. Um, sometimes they're very subtle opportunities. Uh, and, and it's like we can choose those opportunities or not choose those opportunities um, to tell someone about Christ. I had a, a new person that, that came and moved into the uh, community, somebody that I knew from my youth, and they, uh, they sent me a, a Facebook message and said that they were a realtor and they would appreciate if, you know, their help, if, if they, you know, if, we, if I had any property to sell or knew of anybody, that we, I would refer them to this person. And I said, you know, that's, I'm glad to know that you're in the real estate. And I said, you know, I'm the minister of Butler Christian Church. If, you know, moving back into the area, if you need a, a place to come and worship, we would welcome you. I never heard any more from them. Um, I don't know whether that's good or bad. So as we close today and as I shared in Sunday school, I was building more fence this week and, and hopefully I've got almost all of it done. Uh, we're down in the home stretch. I've got just one four acre plot to, to build sometime during the winter or early spring. And every time I build fence, <clears throat> I get a parable. So this week's parable is about post holes. So as I'm building this fence on my brother's property, and, and, and he had fence on his property. He had a high tensile uh, fence, but it wouldn't keep Duke or it wouldn't keep the sheep in. So <clears throat> I agreed to put woven wire around. There was about uh, seven acres or so that we fenced this week. So as, as I was laying out to my brother how I was going to do that, and I need a working space at the bottom of this to divide the two pastures into two places, and and a gathering place for the animals to feed so I could count them every day, get a physical look at them to see what their health looks like and give them their, their uh, wash their feet. I don't wash them individually. I run them through a solution, but, but they have, this all has to be done and then a place to work them when, when time comes to work. So as, as I was describing to him how this was going to look, I needed to dig two post holes. And he said, oh no, you can't do that. He said, he said, down around the barn where we're at, he said, there was an old rock road here, and he said, you'll just, you'll never get those dug. You're going to have to rethink and redo um, what you're going to. Well, knowing me, I'm a little on the hard-headed side. So <clears throat> Friday, he was gone helping my other brother on a building, so I got everything down to those two post holes. And I said, well, it's time to dig these two post holes. I'm not going to let two holes in the ground hold me back from what I need to do. So I choose to dig the, the last hole first, kind of like this week's parable. And as I start to dig with it, <clears throat> I get down just under a little bit of dirt and I hit the road. And, and for you that know what napping rocks is, uh, for those of you that are familiar with that, phrase and what a napping hammer is and in that process you will know what I'm getting ready to go through. For those of you who don't, Google it this afternoon. So I hit this I hit this this old road that has been napped in with rocks. So as I'm using my spud bar to basically pick teeth from the earth to get down past this roadbed. And as I'm as I'm popping them out and digging them out and, and I continue to dig down and, and as I get down about a foot I hit the edge of this one rock and, and and it just kind of shook the ground to my right. And it's like, oh boy, this is a good one. <laughs> so I worked, but I had, I had to where I could get the edge. So I worked it around and, and I was able to break it off. And then I continued to dig and the digging was a little bit easier. And then I got down and there was one small rock at the very, at, at about 23, 24 inches. And I, I chose that rock out and, and I had the first hole done. About this time, my brother shows up and I said, I got one down, just one to go. And he said, think you'd ever get the first one dug. So we tamp this, this uh, post in and, and get it lined up and get to dig the second one because we're going to have to brace the two. 
So as I began to dig, I knew I was in the road still, and, and I had to get through that section of it, and, and I got through it. So as I'm digging, I hit a rock, and it just, it's a big rock. Well, by now, I have chosen the line that I'm going to put. So I cannot move the post hole from right to left. I can move it a little bit forward, front to back, because of my bracing. So I choose to come a little closer to the other post that I've dug. Well, I get to the edge of it. So I dig this rock out about this big. So now I've got this huge 18 to 2 foot hole where I'm putting a four and a half inch post in. So I continue to dig and I dig down and 24 inches, boom, I hit this solid rock bottom. And I said, I'm good enough. 24 inches is good. It's, it's rock all the way up and down. It's, it's going to be good. So the parable is, don't let a little bit of laboring, if you truly believe in something, don't let an obstacle, you know, when I hit that first rock bed, those napping rocks, I could have said, I, I'm done. I'll, I'll, I'll do something else here. I'll change all my plans. You know, fight through. When, when I hit the rock that I hit the edge of and I was able to break that part off. Don't let a little bit of, of extra work cost you the reward down the road. And then with that second hole, as, as you are digging or as you're working towards your goal, whatever it may be, you may need to change or to alter your goal just a little bit so that you can see the end progress. Um, so don't, uh, don't let a, little, a few rocks uh, get in the way of your goal. Thought for the week, Brian. Does it matter if we are the last or the first that is called? Amen. Let us pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we, we do thank you for today. We thank you for everyone that has assembled here, dear Lord, and we just pray that, that, that you heard the, the word of the vineyard and the labor that came to work, whether it was to work all day or it was to work just a little while. Dear Lord, we will all receive the same reward in your eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.